All right, for all of you lawn care people out there trying to decide whether to use organic lawn fertilizers or kind of the standard stuff, the stuff that you see that are kind of organic or not organic at all, uh, this video I hope will shed some light. I'm going to look at a lot of products and I'm going to focus on the active ingredients. I don't want to focus so much on the product name or brand, uh, but you're going to see it. All right, here's my spread. This is kind of organic products. Melorganite is kind of a semi-organic. I've got some soil amendments. I got some extra additives and I got mostly inorganic things over here. Sorry, the dogs just barked. Let me touch on some of the most obvious things right up front. Organic fertilization is gonna be more expensive. It just is. You're gonna either put down uh, less product to kind of keep your costs in line or you're going to spend a lot more money on a lot more products to get the same amount of, let's call it nitrogen or just nutrient uh, additives into the lawn uh, compared to the inorganic stuff. But this is the thing that is lost on a lot of people. When you're putting down organic uh, ingredients, you don't usually need as much. So for instance, if you're putting down a urea or a ammonium sulfate, these would go into the more synthetic category or the manufactured category. It's typical for a lawn, many lawns will take like four pounds of nitrogen over the course of an entire year, but those products don't come with anything else in them. So you're not adding organic matter to the lawn. You're not getting like the amino acids that come in uh, natural sources. Uh, you're not getting any of the extra stuff, the trace nutrients that come in many organic sources. So you're literally kind of forcing growth with those kinds of inputs. When you're putting down natural and organic ingredients, you can put down less nitrogen and usually get similar growth. Certainly you'll get similar health, if not better health, because a lot of those ingredients include extra stuff uh, that's not really on the label because a lot of it is trace nutrients trace minerals you're getting a lot of amino acids that uh, they're just not labeled uh, alfalfa meal is one that i talk about a lot on this channel because alfalfa, alfalfa meal comes with something called tricontinol in it uh, it's kind of this organic organic naturally occurring compound it's kind of a stimulant for rooting and root development in your plants Many organic or natural soil additives like uh, azomite or green sand or earthworm castings, not necessarily biochar, but biochar has its own uh, benefits of applying to the lawn. But these additives, these ingredients, these nutrients that we put down onto the lawn aid the lawn uh, in ways that the synthetics cannot, uh, they can't touch. So let's go over here and we'll take a look and I'm going to give you a little bit of uh, additional information here. All right, this is kind of my current stash of organic products. I've used others. I actually have others, but they're packed up in boxes because we're moving. Uh, so this is what I got available right now to show you. Um, I've got a bag of Scott's Natural Lawn Food. If we come down here to the ingredient list. All right, I got interrupted by my daughter, which I'm always happy to see that this is why i keep a good lawn i want the those kids playing in the lawn anyway uh scott's natural lawn food if we look down at the uh, ingredients it's an 11 2 2 this product uses feather meal meat meal bone meal blood meal and then sop sulfate of potash or sometimes known as uh, potassium sulfate you'll notice that the vast majority of everything in here is animal based on average, not always, but on average, animal-based organic ingredients are a little bit slower to break down in the lawn. So when you put this down on the lawn, most likely that nitrogen is gonna go to work on the grass a little bit slower than the plant-based stuff that you'll see over here. This is the Dr. Earth. Dr. Earth uses alfalfa meal, but they do use some feather meal. So the alfalfa is probably gonna take over first, followed by the feather meal potassium sulfate. It's the same organic or the OMRI listed version of sulfate of potash. It's the same stuff. So this is a 502. There's no, no phosphorus in this. What you could do, remember potassium sulfate is sulfate of potash, which you can buy all on its own. Brand doesn't really matter. So long as you're buying sulfate of potash 
all by itself, it's always going to be an 0048. This is OMRI listed, although it doesn't say so here on this label. The ingredient itself is. And this is what you're going to find added as a potassium source into most bags. So here we go. This is the Grass Genie from the Lawn Box guys. If we look here, we got a 1006. So there's that potassium. We come down to the ingredient list and we've got potassium sulfate or sulfate of potash. This also uses soybean meal just like the Dr. Earth. So the soybean meal is going to be kind of fast acting. Where is it? It's going to be kind of fast acting, but here we've got sodium nitrate. Sodium nitrate is OMRI listed, but it's not exactly a plant-based source of nitrogen, nor is it an animal-based source of nitrogen like you see over here. This is a mind. It's almost a kind of like a chemical and um, more intelligent people out there than me could probably explain it a little bit better. But sodium nitrate is acceptable for OMRI certification. And this is what the salt index is based on. So whenever you talk about fertilizers, you're always, you should be considering the salt index of a, of a fertilizer. Organic products that I just showed you, these meat meals and these feather meals and these alfalfa meals and the soybean meals, um, malorganite for instance, they're all extraordinarily low in the salt index. And what they're doing is they, they're comparing the salt relative to, relative to sodium nitrate, which is in this Grass Genie product. So what I'm saying here is if you're using something that has sodium nitrate in it, it's actually going to be significantly high on the salt index, even if it's organic and kind of listed as an OMRI uh, certification product. Companies are required to, uh, to label that as an ingredient if the percentage is very small. I don't remember what it is off the top of my head, somewhere around like 10%. If something like 10, 20, maybe five, I don't know. Uh, I'm not always well prepared. If that percentage crosses a threshold, they have to put it on the label. But chances are usually pretty good that it's got a low concentration on these products. Still though, that means that if you've got sodium nitrate in your OMRI listed, OMRI certified product, you can't just dump it on the lawn. You got to think about it. That salt is what burns the lawn. It's not the nitrogen, it's the salts. And that's the one of the bigger problems, well, one of the bigger problems with the, with the inorganic forms of synthetic nitrogen, which I'm going to get to in a second. Moving on, these products obviously are packaged for lawn but you don't have to buy a lawn packaged product. You can go straight to your garden store and buy literally the root ingredient. In this case, alfalfa meal. I put this stuff down on my lawn quite a bit. Not only could you put alfalfa meal down, but you can go to the same store and purchase a gigantic bag of feather meal or bone meal. Bone meal is where you're gonna be getting a lot of your natural sources of phosphorus. Uh, you can also get, I've done this before, I've gotten seabird guano and then you steep it in water and throw it into a uh, spray tank and you can spray um, a natural source of phosphorus on the lawn. So if you wanted to use that in, say, for instance, a uh, seed starting scenario or maybe a soil test told you that you were deficient in phosphorus, you could do that. Uh, the more common source of uh, quasi-organic um, Phosphorus is to just grab a bag of malorganite. Malorganite's going to go down, and malorganite is a little bit different from all of these because this is a biosolid. All of these products are going to be more expensive. However, every product here is going to add a lot of extra benefit to your lawn, stuff that is not listed on the label. Now, I told you that animal based fertilizers tend to be a little bit more fast acting but if you go down and get yourself some fish emulsion which is included in this uh, green machine product here there you go it says manhattan fish this also comes with seaweed so the fish actually goes to work as a nitrogen source pretty quickly especially since this is a liquid it's going to go down and go pretty quickly this also comes with kelp which you can get uh, in a variety of uh packaging here's one that's pretty much just see that says seaweed uh, that's the main ingredient for uh, many kelp based products all by itself that fish emulsion is going to be a pretty fast acting natural source of nitrogen 
but you're also going to get all of the extra little benefits that come with it all the all the trace nutrition uh, that goes beyond n p and k um, then we start getting into organic soil building stuff and this is the stuff that you should even if you're using synthetic fertilizers uh, you should be considering adding this stuff to your lawn program anyway. Again, it's going to add to the cost, which is why most people don't do it. So here in this Root RX product, again, the product doesn't matter. We're talking about the ingredients here. Uh, here's the ingredients. We're getting a bunch of humic acid. Here's that kelp again. And we're getting some molasses. So the molasses is going to help um, the thatchy areas of your lawn break down. It's going to help the beneficial bacteria living in your soil uh, to thrive a little bit more. And the humic acid is really going to help your grass with nutrient uptake. So whatever nutrients are already in your lawn, that humic acid uh, is, I don't know, I'm going to call it magic here. Uh, it's going to help those nutrients go up into the grass system a little bit better. Humic acid comes with something that's called fulvic acid. They're all mixed together. Um, and both the humics and the fulvics do slightly different things. They work together at the same time to improve uh, the way that your lawn performs over the course of a year. Granular versions of humic acid exist as well. Here's a granular uh, version. It's got some humic acid in there. This one also comes with some calcium, sulfur, and then here we go. Oh, what do you got? Flower. You got a flower for me? Thank you, baby. That's a beautiful leaf. Can I have it? Can I put it in my pocket? Thank you. I love you. <laughs> so anyway this comes with those plant-based organic acids so remember i talked about how in some of these organic sources you're getting a bunch of amino acids and other sorts of things uh, that are hard to classify on a label you're getting that with a product like this you also get it with a product that's just a not i mean this is a lawn spreadable stuff this is just what you buy at the garden store it's just worm castings but worm castings have tons of of beneficial things in it which are going to build up the health of your soil the biology in your soil and the grass that's living in the soil biochar is another product that can go down it's pretty messy but biochar is going to go into the soil. the best scenario is to put this down during uh bare dirt seeding or right after core aeration so you can incorporate the biochar into the soil structure itself that's going to help hold nutrition in the lawn hold water in the lawn so that you'll have a lot less drought stress and your plants will be able to access nutrients that they might not be able to access otherwise which is important if you're using something like ammonium sulfate so getting on to synthetic forms of fertilization this is only nitrogen it's ammonium sulfate it is manufactured it is synthetic nitrogen purely synthetic nitrogen it's high on the salt index however it's not as high as the sodium nitrate that was in the organic product that i just showed you back there it's similar in salt index it's something like i think it's like 88 compared to 100 so relatively it's slightly lower uh, but in terms of fertilizers it's pretty high truly some of the highest salt index things do fall into the organic category however those are more like your manures and those are the things that i wouldn't recommend spreading on a lawn if you're going to be throwing down ammonium sulfate ammonium sulfate is immediately plant available uh, it's water soluble so you can put it down in cold temperatures or in warm temperatures and when you water it in it's just going to suck right down into the soil of your lawn and the plant root systems will be able to take it up right away now if you over apply or if you don't get enough if things dry out uh, maybe you don't water it in very well then that osmosis effect can take uh take hold and you could burn your lawn if you're over applying especially in dry hot weather and then of course you're not adding any organic matter to the to the soil when you're putting this down so there's no long-term benefits nor are the nor are you getting any of the side benefits of trace nutrients trace nutrition um, or any uh, amino acids or uh, naturally occurring chemicals that stimulate grass and plants in a beneficial way now having said that urea is something that is used also and it is similar in the salt index to ammonium sulfate and both urea 
and ammonium sulfate tend to be the root ingredients for regular inexpensive fertilizer products that you find on big box store shelves everywhere if i were to flip this over this is just your been your just generic turf builder lawn food but regardless of the brand if you just find a cheap uh, lawn food at any store you're almost always going to find urea ammoniacal nitrogen and if we look at our sources we've got various forms of urea we've got potassium sulfate which is uh, interesting to me because that's the uh, that's the organic version of potassium as opposed to muriate of potash or mop this is sop and then here we got the ammonium sulfate which is right here so this product right here is a mix of urea ammonium sulfate with some organic potassium and then a little bit of iron sucrate which in this context is probably the least important reason to buy this product now an additional thing that you need to think about when you're using straight urea or any urea based product is urea needs to be watered in immediately and the reason for that is if you put urea down on the ground and right now like the ground is a little bit damp mostly because of dew and the small amount of rain that we had yesterday if you put this down onto mildly damp or wet soil or if you water it but not very much you're actually going to kind of activate it and a lot of the nitrogen that's in urea is going to transform itself into nitrogen gas and go up into the sky the layman's term for that is gassing off so this is definitely a product that i wouldn't put down unless i knew i could get enough water on it right away to push it into the ground with ammonium sulfate that's not going to gas off but if you water it into the ground with too much water then a lot of the ammonium sulfate is going to leach through the root system of your grass into the deeper subsoil and your lawn will not be able to use it so two different ways that this product that either of these products can be lost with these products you can't really lose anything you're adding to the soil even if they're not actively being used by the grass this product and products like this are going to be fairly inexpensive here's another brand that's pretty similar jonathan green if we look at this product which is meant for seeding and sod starting so you've got a lot of phosphorus in there the nitrogen is again this ammoniacal and urea nitrogen derived from urea which is going to be fast acting like i said but then we've got some polymer coated urea that means that the urea when it goes down on the lawn slowly breaks down uh, the bacteria in the lawn slowly break down the polymer coating on the urea and then eventually allow the urea to go into the soil uh, and feed the plants so that's a way of taking urea and slowing it down and here we got the murate of potash which is what i said before surprised me about this product uh, murate of potash is usually a cheaper version of potash and it doesn't fall under the the omri certification standards so uh, basically it's not going to be used in organic uh, lawns or gardens diammonium phosphate is what they're using right here for the phosphate or the or the phosphorus diammonium phosphate is fairly inexpensive and it's totally not a natural source if you use diammonium phosphate which is do or dap dap in any sort of like organic like gardening here's my daughter look at her she's just playing uh, any sort of organic gardening uh, you lose your uh, organic uh, status for a number of years so not to say that this is bad it's just not your natural and organic product that i that i like so for phosphorus um malorganite is one of the easiest forms of phosphorus to put on a lawn uh, it's easy to find in most places um, and it's meant to be spread on a lawn uh, like i said before you could just go out and get bone meal um, and add that into your lawn program bone meal is more of a powder so it doesn't go down as easily um, what i have started doing and i want to continue doing a little bit more often if i want to add <laughs> if i want to add phosphorus to a situation and i want to stay in the organic realm then uh seabird guano is actually a pretty way to, pretty good way to do it all you got to do is just throw the stuff in the water steep it for a day or two um uh, strain the water and then spray it on the lawn 
At the risk of this video becoming extremely too long, uh, I'm going to touch on the last little segment over here, the uh, micros, uh, the micros and trace stuff. So if you're using products like this, um, you're going to not be getting uh, micronutrients in any sort of uh, significant way. And you're not going to be getting trace elements either. That's why we come over here and for people who are using stuff like this frequently, you really go have to go out of your way to add products that are dedicated micronutrient uh, sources. So you got some micros here. You got to go add your um, your product like cytokinins. That's the target um, ingredient that comes in the kelp. So if you're if you're putting kelp as a fertilizer down, you're getting some cytokinins. You're probably not getting as much as if you use a dedicated product but with this stuff you're not getting it at all unless you go out out of your way to to find a dedicated product um silica from the strong art guys but any version any brand that makes silica is also going to silica as a trace it's a trace nutrient as well um, so you can add that into your lawn program that's going to help with uh, hardiness so silica you're not usually finding in these bottles of of uh, micronutrients you're kind of getting the major micronutrients when you buy bottles like this um, other sorts of trace things you can find on store shelves all by themselves so what i'm saying is if you really want to have a really healthy lawn and you want to go the synthetic route you're not actually going to get a very healthy lawn in the long run unless you really make it really complex and start adding in things like this to the lawn program, which then takes the whole cost savings of using products like that out of the equation because suddenly you're buying a whole bunch of other things. Now, there's nothing wrong with only applying urea, ammonium sulfate, uh, or off-the-store shelf products. Uh, if you do that, you are definitely going to get a nice green flush every single time that you apply these products. Your lawn is going to look great. What I'm getting at is the health and the durability of the lawn is not going to be there. So you can only apply your over-the-counter um, fertilizers based on urea and ammonium sulfate and have a great looking lawn throughout the year without spending nearly as much money. But I would always remind you that once drought happens, once excessive heat happens, uh, at the end of the season when dormancy starts to sit in, or at the beginning of the season when winter dormancy starts ending, those things are going to be sluggish. You're going to struggle. If you're okay with that, then go for it. But I will always be an advocate for going for this natural and organic route, unless you just can't afford it. There's no reason to spend money that you don't have. All right, if you've watched this far into the video, I appreciate it. This is a long video and there's a lot of information in it. Uh, I'm going to leave out um, another step because I got a whole nother video on it and I do want you to watch it if you find it relevant to you. Up here in the corner is my video about winterization of the lawn. So yes, winterization is a fertilization application that happens in the fall, but it's not exactly fall fertilization. Watch that video to find out more about my thoughts on it. Over here is my thoughts on low nitrogen plans. If you want your lawn to look great, but not grow very much, then this is a good option for a lot of people. Choose a video.